Hi there, Hannibal and everybody else. Today I'm going to talk a bit about criminalization of porn. Hannibal, in one of your latest videos, you say that you are against criminalization and you point out that uh, criminalization is pointless because it is scientifically proven that porn doesn't do any harm. However, you claim that it's a minor issue, that it doesn't really matter if they censor or criminalize porn or not. I think you're very wrong about this. You frame it as if it is an issue about people losing access to porn, and that is not the issue. Who gets to choose what is porn and what is not. When people talk about freedom of speech being stifled because uh, porn gets criminalized, they're not talking about their precious jerk of material getting taken away and that it should be included in freedom of speech. They are talking about actual I mean, of course that is actual as well, but they're talking about much bigger stuff. They are talking about political opinions and art and so on being labeled as porn by those who want to censor it. When Canada criminalized porn, it was the LGBT movement that got struck down upon. And here in Sweden, we have had quite a bit of repression against fetishists and this crackdown has been framed in the idea that these people are porn. So it's not a minor issue. Besides, even if it was only about actual porn, about things that deserve to be called pornography, it would still not just be an issue of people having access to it, it would be a matter of social norms. Just like criminalization of porn can be used as a sledgehammer against political opinions and so on, it can also be used as a normative sledgehammer to help those who want to stigmatize all of sexuality or some kinds of sexuality do just that. So, I mean, the whole crusade against porn has never been about porn. It's about sexuality and gender and so on. It is not a minor issue at all, it's just a focal point of this larger struggle. And of course I do agree with you that climate change is more important, more important but life is not a zero-sum game. It's not as if, if people stop fighting over uh, porn they can dedicate their energy to fight global warming instead. It doesn't work that way and it's partially the same thing with your rather excellent point that people who are interested in this, in this issue ought to get organized for real instead of just babbling on the internet. Babbling on the internet is still better than nothing. Those who can get organized and actually start doing advocacy should do so, but those who can't get around to that, at least speaking up is, is better than nothing. Also, Hannibal, I think you're flat out wrong about one of your main points for why criminalization wouldn't be a problem. You claim, rightfully, that laws are not retroactive, they can't criminalize porn that has already been made. And sure, they can't criminalize the production of porn 
that has already been made. However, what is happening now, step by step, is criminalizing not only production, but possession and access. Using child porn as their excuse, they develop systems where it becomes illegal to possess information or search for certain information. It becomes illegal to gain access or facilitate getting access to... Uh, well, this wouldn't be a problem if it would contain itself to uh, actual depictions of actual children getting actually raped. But this slippery slope is in free fall. If I haven't misunderstood entirely, England has already made it illegal to possess anything that a judge may subjectively deem to be offensive enough. And I'm not talking about anyone actually being hurt, and it's not about children anymore, even if everybody involved is fully adult, it can still be criminal to possess it. And like I said, it's not just about what people look at to get horny, it is a matter of political opinions and so on. This is a dangerous development. And that's just my two cents on this very big and complex issue. Have a nice day and live long and prosper.